Another of the projects underway is the mariculture of giant clams, the same huge animals depicted in South Pacific movies trapping people by the foot, causing sure death. Well, believe it or not, these little guys are giant clams. Right now they are about the size of your thumb and don't weigh much more. But someday soon they will be over three feet long and weigh upwards of 400 pounds. Biologist Jerry Hesslinger says there's a good reason to study these unique creatures. The primary objective is one of conservation. Uh, the, the giant clams have been an important food source in Micronesia for uh, many hundreds of years. And there's good evidence now that the populations in a number of islands have uh, become extinct. So by breeding these clams uh, uh, in large numbers in the laboratory, we hope to uh, uh, recede or reestablish uh, populations in Palau and elsewhere. Uh, for example, giant clams have uh, become extinct in Guam, uh, in Yap, in Truk, Ponape, and uh, also Koh Rai. Some 10,000 clams have been planted in a hatchery of sorts near the center. And here the growth pattern of the animals can be studied. So far they've found that the giant clams are the fastest growing mollusk bivalves in existence and that they have an incredible capability for producing large quantities of edible meat with very little feeding. As it turns out that uh, we don't have to feed the clams at all. And the reason is that they have uh, living in their tissues tiny microscopic plant cells that uh, are using sunlight to photosynthesize. And these cells are producing almost all of the nutrition of the giant clams. So what we have essentially are animals which are powered by the sun. Swimming over the clams, it's easy to observe this relationship. The giant clams are very sensitive both to uh, changes in light intensity and they're also sensitive to uh, water movement. So as we swim over the clams, they will react by uh, closing their valves violently. And this is a, a defense mechanism. And uh, we can see that in nature, when a, when a potential predator swims over the clam, it will react by closing its shell. It will force a, a strong jet of water uh, and aim it at the predator or at the potential predator. The reason the research is so important is that these giant or tridacnid clams have an immense commercial value in Asian markets. According to recent interviews of Taiwanese dealers, that country alone imports as much as 300 tons of giant clam adductor muscle, considered an oriental delicacy. And that's worth $25 million at retail. When you count other large markets like Hong Kong, Singapore, and Japan, the annual giant clam industry may approach $100 million. And most of this harvesting is illegal. But when that kind of money is at stake, most poachers take the chance of being caught. The clams have been completely wiped out in other parts of the world from legitimate use. Uh, there's good evidence from uh, Papua New Guinea, for example, that uh, coastal people had been fishing giant clams for thousands of years. And uh, we see uh, in archaeological sites uh, huge numbers of giant clam shells uh, in, in shell middens. And uh, when we look for live clams on the reef in uh, Papua New Guinea, we find very few. So this uh, suggests to us that uh, human fishing pressure has been uh, a primary cause of uh, uh, decline in, in numbers of clams. Fortunately, the clam's quick growth rate will help stay the threat of extinction. We're talking, or now we're looking at about uh, 20 centimeters for a harvestable size, and uh, that takes about uh, three years to achieve uh, from the time of from the fertilized egg to the time of uh, harvest uh, can be achieved in about three years. Right now, the prospect of long-range farming is being explored. It has been tried in the past, but has met with some failure. Uh, we would uh, envision farming these things like uh, pigs or chickens, for example, uh, possibly on a large scale uh, in reef tracks throughout Micronesia. But this would be uh, a long-term objective, say, over the next uh, decade or so. An experiment with the giant clam babies on Guam last year met with failure as the juveniles were attacked by predators. But future projects may be possible as the center learns more and more about the animals. New protection methods are being developed, and the future may bring the animals back in abundance not only to Palau, but also throughout Micronesia and Islam Guam.